Growing up in Kenya, my sister and I were very close. But like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes and I always got hand-me-downs. Now she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one, and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is Moving Money for Better. I don't understand. Is it that Mr. President doesn't watch my show or what? I mean, I give all kinds of advice on this show for free. Like, free, free advice. Mm -hmm. But the man is just doing his own thing. What is the meaning of that now? Buari, have you heard what people are saying? Electricity is so bad now that people are now saying that they would rather have a corrupt administration with better electricity than what they have right now. Fuel scarcity is so bad that people are now spending days in line trying to buy fuel. Someone told me they are very happy that they only spend five hours in line. I'm like, five hours? Because you want to buy petrol? Like, I, I don't even know what that looks like anymore. My Olga, what happened to the change you promised us? ABC! There is no electricity. How do you want people to survive? People are suffering in Nigeria. Meanwhile, we said that we are fighting corruption. Yes, we are fighting corruption. But also, this corruption fight has a comma. When people like Bukola Saraki can fly in forensic experts from the US and Israel to work on his court case. What about common people that cannot afford to bring people from Israel and the US? Really? Mr. Saraki, this is your way of trying to intimidate Nigerians, my brother, instead of spending so much money to cover up on lies. Why not just do the right thing and save yourself some money? Oh, I forgot. It's not his money, really. <laughs> it's a taxpayer's money, so he doesn't really care. People that are not that rich, people that are nobody, they will put them in prison overnight. But people that are the real armed robbers, their case will be pending and pending. Somebody like uh, Ibinabo, you know that's Nollywood actress. She was in an accident. Her car hit somebody else's car. That person died. So this happened in 2006. When they pick her up this year, Kia Kia, they've sentenced her to five years in prison. Meanwhile, some people that are responsible for the death of thousands of Nigerians are still out there. They're arresting them and bailing them. How do you run a country like that? Did you hear that they found one million dollars at the home of a former chief of defense staff? That is Alex Badi. One million dollars cash. Although the man came out to deny it, challenging EFCC to post the photo. I'm like, EFCC, you to post the photo now? The man has been bailed, you know, <laughs> if it's uh, somebody else, they would have sentenced them overnight. And speaking of suspects, you guys would not believe Senator Kashamu. You know that man had police when arrest a man for calling him a drug baron on WhatsApp or what WhatsApp message. You see how corrupt people are being celebrated? This is a man that is still wanted in the US for drug peddling. But of course he denied it. He denied it saying that, oh, it is his brother and then that his brother has died. And people were like, so you have a brother? We didn't know you have a brother until this thing happened and suddenly the brother has died. Hey! He said, no, it's not true. He's not wanted. Not like I spoke with the lawyer myself in Illinois. The man is wanted. But what did we do? Nigeria made him a senator. We celebrated him. Just look at what is written in this paper. The one is laughing at us, my people. But all that I've been saying is, if this man is really innocent, what is hard in getting on a plane and coming to the US and clearing your name? My brother, if you are not guilty, why are you intimidating people over WhatsApp message? Haba, if Kashamu gets away with this case, that means that there is no more freedom of speech, freedom of expression, or freedom of the press in Nigeria. So for those of you that think that, oh, this doesn't concern you, it does. Because tomorrow it may be you. I bet you don't send uh, WhatsApp messages or text messages or Facebook. You know how the senators were trying to clamp down on social media? That is exactly what Kashamu is trying to do. The thing that I don't understand in all of this is how Nigerian officials talk and how they address their citizens. For example, my father in the Lord, uh, Mr. Femi Adishino. Now, this man was on Channels TV and they were asking him about electricity problem in Nigeria. And can you believe that he said, well, it is because some people vandalized gas pipeline. I was like... There was a vandalism of gas pipeline, first in Bielsa. We've had we, that so we, many times. Yes, yeah, we lost about 1,600 megahertz in one day. I, what? Like, gas pipeline? What? I, I was still trying to digest that, where he threw another bomb. If some people are crying that they are in darkness, they should go and hold those who vandalized the installations. <laughs> To demand for our rights to basic things like constant electricity. 
To you, to you, immense, we are crying. Uh, Mr. Adeshina, now we are wailing wailers. You know, he started the statement, wailing wailers. So we should go and hold those vandalizing installations. Is that what he said? If some people are crying that they are in darkness, they should go and hold those who vandalize the installations. Call the world, give me that phone. Some people, when you talk to them, you need to put on your spec, okay? Hello, hello, eh, uh, yes, <laughs> what's up, baby? <laughs> Mr. Adeshina, how are you doing? Yes, eh, uh, excuse me, sir, eh, uh, uh. When was the last time that you lost power at your house? Just tell me. No, I don't know. When was the last time that you queued for petrol to put in your generator? Do you even have a generator in your house? Of course not. Of course you don't. When did you become the spokesperson again? Less than a year, my brother. And you've already forgotten what it's like. Ah, my brother, I bet well on it. You see? This mentality of the people at the top are entitled to something, but the people at the bottom are not supposed to enjoy it, it has to end in Nigeria. If this man doesn't have electricity in his house for one week, one week, my people, and if he has no fuel for generator, would he also complain? Imagine the rest of us now saying to him, well, why are you crying? For real, my brother, we need to sit down and, and discuss how we'll be addressing people, especially the people that are paying your salary, in case you don't know. The taxpayers are the ones paying your salary. Don't beg me, y'all. And speaking of salaries, did you hear Mr. President? saying that 27 states in Nigeria are having trouble paying salaries. <laughs> so on top of fuel scarcity and a power failure, inflation of everything inflatable, on top of all of that, people are not getting paid. Haba. And now, um, lest I forget, my yoga, Inadu, you're welcome to this program. In case you're watching, why would you sign Nigeria as a member of Saudi Arabia's Islamic military alliance? No, 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 no. I think Nigerians, we don't think. We don't always use our brain. And Mr. President, you are telling us that this is because of the fight against Boko Haram. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Who are you deceiving? Seriously, all this while that we've been facing Boko Haram in Nigeria, where was Saudi Arabia? How have they helped us? Why should we now trust them? Signing that treaty, by the way, it means that all of Saudi Arabia's enemies are now our enemies as well in Nigeria. They can ask for our soldiers at any time, and we're obligated to honor that request. So now Nigerian soldiers, apart from facing Boko Haram, now we have to face the enemies of Saudi Arabia if Saudi Arabia requests for our soldiers at any moment. You know that Saudi is fighting with Iran, they are fighting with Iraq, Syria, Yemen. Nigeria is not an Islamic country. 50% of Nigeria's population are Christians. How do you do something like this without the consent of 50% of your citizens, Mr. President? Many of whom voted for you, by the way. So we have no business fighting war with Syria or Iraq or... Seriously. And what if Saudi is fighting another African country? Suddenly, Nigeria is now obligated to fight its own people for Arabs? Like, are you kidding me? I don't get it. This is a country that does not respect racial equality. Last year, at least 274 Nigerians were killed in Saudi Arabia's stampede. In case you didn't know, 274 devoted Muslims who went there to pray. Is there anything wrong in going for pilgrimage? Only for them to end up dead and that was not the first time that nigerians will be killed in saudi arabia this thing has been happening for years apologies or sympathy to the nigerian government or the nigerian people or the people of all other countries that died because you know more than 2,000 people were killed last year alone in fact they even blamed us for the stampede okay they blamed africans for the stampede they don't think that we are equal they don't see us as the same so how can that country be an ally or is there anyone that doesn't know that they look down on us africans because of the color of our skin, especially our women. You'll be surprised how they treat our women who go there to work as housemaids. No matter how much we idolize Saudi Arabia, they don't see us as equal to them. Seriously, Ogabwari, let's not deceive ourselves now. Have we done all that we can about Boko Haram at home before we go to Saudi Arabia? Last year, this Australian negotiator mentioned the former governor of Bonu State, Alimo Sharif, as a sponsor of Boko Haram. What did we do since that time? In fact, forget about when Durantan was in power. Since Buhari became president of almost a year. Now, what have we done about that case? Was the man not recently made the chairman of PDP? He's a free man. He, I don't, forget about it. So is it Saudi Arabia that will now come and help us to investigate the suspected sponsors of Boko Haram or, or what? I don't understand. Honestly, Buhari needs to wake up. People are losing interest. I'm not saying all these things because I'm a Christian. There was a time that I spoke about the atrocities that Israel is committing as well. This is not about religion. This is about the fact that these people have proven time and again that they don't care about us. So why do you want me to believe that now they will come and fight our battles? I'm very happy for the people that were recently rescued from Boko Haram, about 800 people. Kudos to the Nigerian army for that. And while we're talking about
about Nigerian army, I would also like to express my sincere condolences to the families of the colonel that was beheaded. Can you imagine that this is still going on? It's very, very sad. He was gone for days. They looked for him only to find his dead body. He was beheaded. And not only him, several soldiers have also been killed, including this young lady. It's very, very sad. Her condolences to their family members and their loved ones. So I think that it's better for us to take care of business at home first, do everything that we can do in our own power before we run to Saudi Arabia. I'm not saying that Saudi Arabia will not help. Maybe they will help. I don't know. But we have not done all that we can do at home. But again, you guys know I don't know much. I don't always make sense. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to Angola, my people, if any country needs a revolution right now, it is the people of Angola. One man and his family have turned a country of 21 million people into their private estate. This year makes it 36 years since their president, Jose Eduardo Santos, has been in power, enriching himself and his family with the oil money. As you guys know, Angola is the second largest oil producer in Africa. 36 years, definitely a dictator. He even surpassed Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe. So last week, I was so furious when I heard that several 17 young people, including a popular musician, were sentenced to prison, some to four years, some to eight years, and so forth. And what's their crime? You would not believe it. These guys are members of a book club. You know how people form book clubs, you know, to read all kinds of books and discuss it? Well, it so happened that the Angolan government did not like the book that these people were reading. And the title of the book is From Dictatorship to Democracy, a 20-year-old text about non-violent political defiance that's often cited in protest movements. So these people were reading a book from dictatorship to democracy that was their crime just imagine living in a country where you can't read just any book where the government has to censor the book that you read or discuss with your friends how do you live in a country like that so they were arrested since june of last year they held these people for five months with no trial like really so they actually started protesting they went on hunger strike they were like why did you arrest us you didn't try us in court you just put us in prison for five whole months. In fact, the rapper went on hunger strike for 36 days. When the pressure was coming from the international world as well, in November of last year, the government finally started their trial. And guess what happened? When they started the trial, they did not allow their family members or journalists at the court proceedings. What kind of judgment is that? Like, we don't need a sorcerer to tell us that kind of judgment would not be free and fair. So in March last month, the government finally said that they were guilty of plotting to overthrow the government. I, I, I was like, uh, what? no, no, no. <laughs> this, this is interesting. So you can convict me based on the book that I'm reading? Ha! I need to march forward to Angola and talk to Mr. President like, sit down, what is your problem? Eh? Convicting people because of, ah, hey, you see? And that was how they sentenced these people. How ridiculous. See, that is what happens when you have a dictator as president. I, I'm sure you all know that. Dictators are always insecure and afraid. Deep down, they are afraid of being overthrown. Any small gathering of people like this, they will say, oh, maybe they are trying to overthrow me. How do you live like that? Knowing that people don't want you and you are forcing yourself on them and you are trying to instill fear in them by doing things like this. I mean, why do you think they did this? It's just to instill fear in the people. Just to tell people, oh, you better not gather and read any book that may look suspicious. You better not protest. That is the tactic that dictators use. But what they don't know is that stupid moves like this is actually what leads to revolution. I really, really hope that the people of Angola would wake up and, you know, have a revolution and free yourself from this man and his family. What else are you waiting for, my people of Angola? Like I said, Angola is the second richest oil producing country in the whole of Africa. So because of that, I think that Angola should actually have the best economy in Africa and not just on paper in terms of the living standard of its people. And I'm saying that considering the fact that Angola has only 21 million people. That is, you know, if you are comparing that with Nigeria, which is uh, 180 million people, that's like combining Kanu with Lagos and Plateau State. In fact, that is already more than the population of Angola. So if you are 21 million and you are the second largest oil producer on the continent, your people should be enjoying. Instead of the people enjoying though, what do we see? Mr. President and his family becoming richer. Right now, his net worth is $20 billion, making him one of the top 10 richest people in the whole of Africa. There was a time that he was the richest uh, person in Africa. And we're not surprised that his daughter, Isabel Dos Santos, is reportedly the richest richest woman in Africa. 
richer than Olakija, yeah. Which is why they can afford to invite Nicki Minaj during Christmas last year to come and perform. You guys remember? Yeah, put that, uh, why do you have to put up that photo? That photo is very, anyway, Nicki Minaj was there. People were shouting, Nicki, Nicki, why do you have to go and entertain a dictator? But you know, she went to, anyway, the economy is really bad right now because of the oil price that came down. There's a decline in public services from sanitation to medical care. As a matter of fact, right now, Angola is facing the worst yellow fever outbreak in the last 30 years. So people are dying as a result of sanitation service cuts. It's very, very sad. So you would think that Mr. President would think of the way forward, how to fix the issue going on. With all the problem that they're facing right now, this is what the government is doing. Sentencing people to jail because they are reading a book. Ah, Lord have mercy. And as you know, I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to Egypt, I I still don't understand, okay? I still don't understand the importance of having tired roads when you know that you will put red carpet on the road. I have never even seen anywhere in my life where they put red carpet. Uh, did you guys see that video? على غير مثال سابق يمد البساط الأحمر لا ليمر الرئيس بل لتمر سيارة ديمة للضابط السابق الذي رأى نفسه كرئيس يتقلد علام بدا المشهد مستفزا بما لم يستطع معه that I'm just sharing it with you guys, you know, has been spending way too much time on Nigerian news in the past several weeks. I'm sorry, my people, you know, do well. Anyway, I could not believe my eyes. I, I'm like, I have never heard of people putting red carpet on the road. Like, what? Like, this people actually spent $200,000 to air eh, Uriya Mute. Well, how much is that in Naira? Ah, 39 million Naira. Hey, my father, oh, my God. And these people will say that it's no money. That is almost 40 million naira that they spent on red carpet for Mr. President limo. It's not even for him to step on. This is for his limo to drive on. Abba, and the people of Egypt. Ah, okay, this is really bad. This is bad. The irony of the story is that Mr. President was actually going to inaugurate a housing project built for Egypt's poorest in Cairo. They built this building for poor people. And then they covered four kilometers of road with red carpet. Four kilometers. Does that even make sense? sense to anybody? Eh? What will happen if his car drives on the road? Will the tires bust or what? Even if he himself steps on the road, what will happen? Will he die? Of course, Egyptians were outraged. They were mad. They were very upset considering the fact that 25% of the population live in poverty. Why spend $200,000 on red carpet? Eh? Almost 40 million naira. Imagine what that money would do. Ah, ah, you know, I don't want to go there. You know what I would do with $200,000? You don't even want to know. Anyway, I'm I'm telling you the hypocrisy of African leaders tire me. It tires me. Similar things happen in Nigeria, by the way, and I'm sure it happens in all other African countries. I'm sure it probably happens outside Africa as well. When a government official is going to visit, for example, inside displaced people in Nigeria, you will see these people, they will take care of the place. They will make it look very nice, you know. On that day, they will serve the children with very, very nice plates. Maybe they've been serving them with plastic before, but ah, governor is coming, something like that. They will buy fancy plates to serve them, and because of the government official, they will give them extra extra food than they normally give them. Maybe they were giving them tiny, tiny food before just to impress the government officials. I don't understand. Isn't that the day that you are supposed to look wretched and demonstrate your need so they can pity you and help you? And they say, they never think. See, when I was in secondary school in Nigeria, if the governor is coming to my hometown, they will start fixing the road, they will paint everything, they will give us electricity that day that he's coming. It never made sense to me. I must have been a rebel since I was young. It never made sense because as soon as the man leaves, we are back to square one. That thing used to pay me me like why are Africans like this? This is exactly the same thing going on in Egypt. Trying to impress Mr. President at the peril of your own people spending $200,000 on red carpet. Shello, shello. I hope somebody was arrested. Eh? Take me to Egypt. Get me upset. Get your acts together. You guys know I don't know more. Chill. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Growing up in Kenya, my sister and I were very close. But like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes, and I always got hand-me-downs. Now, she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one, and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is moving money for better. 
I leave today, I like to read some of your emails. And the first one is from Dami Abedin from Scotland. This person says, Hi Adiola, sorry to see you under the attack of bronchitis. Hope you're keeping well. Thank you very much. I feel very much better. It's been some weeks now. Unfortunately, even though you have Dr. Damages around you, nobody would recommend him because he would do more damages than you can even imagine. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dr. Damages, eh? My brother, really? Why do you have to pick on Dr. Damages like that? Uh, it's not fair now. The guy is trying his best, and eh? It's not that uh, he didn't ask me to come and see him. He asked me to come. I just thought about, you know, the consequences of the circumstance of the peripheral of the condition of my health at that time and the hope of the transformational agenda. I thought about all that, and I said, no, maybe I probably shouldn't go and see him. So I went to an actual hospital. Not to say that he doesn't know his job, you know? <laughs> Dr. Damages, you know, I do well in case you're watching my brother, <laughs> wonderful man. Um, so, and then he said that, thank you for bringing up the issue of Nigerian senators throwing out the equality bill. Nigeria was also among the countries that signed the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in 2008, but they've done nothing to show for it. Nigeria has never made any submission to the UN on these issues, and this is tragedy of ignorance of the concept of inclusive development in Nigeria. Wow, I didn't even know that we also signed the bill about people with disabilities eh? of course we didn't do anything like why are we like that why do we like to look good in the international world and then we are not really practicing it at home it's very sad people with disabilities in Nigeria the way we treat them you will think that they are not human beings it's very very pathetic and the last thing he said was I was also a victim of the passport scam by the Nigerian High Commission in London wow I talked about this last week while I was reading emails they collected money for 64 page passport only to issue me and my son 32 paid passports this is in addition to 20 pound service charges wow thank you so much for telling me my brother this is really sad nigerian embassies need to wake up people are aware of the scams going on at these embassies i don't know ah. the next email is from musa abubaka and he says hi adela i'm really proud of you please just keep it real as usual oh thank you oh thank you so much i really appreciate that and the last email that i will be reading is from wale adejumo he says that he's a viewer in Gambia. So it's a long email, but he's a viewer that lives in Gambia and he was praising uh, the last episode where I talked about equal opportunity bill in Nigeria. Thank you so much for this wonderful email. He totally praised the episode. And then he talked about the part that he didn't like, which is the part where I talked about women becoming presidents or governors in Nigeria. And of course, he quoted the Bible for me. And then he also quoted the Quran. Okay, thank you very much, my brother. I really appreciate this. Um, I decided to read this because this is just one of several, you know, emails that I got after the last episode where I talked about a quality bill that was not passed in Nigeria. But the only thing that pained me when I get these messages is that I remember specifically saying in the last episode that, let me know what you think. And I said, please do not bring religion into this. I remember specifically saying, don't bring religion into this put religion aside, we're not talking about a woman becoming the head in the mosque or at the church. We are talking about a woman becoming a governor or a president. It's a job. It's just a job. I think the problem is that some people see these things as, oh my God, president, governor, whatever. It's just a title for an office. It is a job. You know, when you are governor, when you are president, you're supposed to do so, 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 so. The same way as when you are a janitor or when you are a teacher, you're supposed to do so, 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 so. If these people would have their way, they would say women cannot be teachers. We, can, we cannot be anything. Why did you allow us to be teachers? We are teaching your children in school now. The same way you see a teacher is the same way you should see a president. It is just the title of an office that requires somebody to put in their 100% to make life better for the people. But at the same time, I understand the way some people reason when it comes to offices like the governor or president. It's because we see them as gods, little gods, okay? And we completely forget about the fact that this is just supposed to be a job. That's why, I don't know if you guys noticed, some presidents in Western word when they become president their hair will turn gray in a short period if you don't know anybody at least you know obama just take a look at how he aged in the eight years that he's been american president because the guy was working day and night but in africa when you become governor or you become president you're suddenly a god most of them don't do half of what they are supposed to do they go there just to embezzle money make life better for themselves and their family members the moment you see these offices as jobs it's just a job description that is when you will 
stop looking at it like, oh, this is for a man, this is for a woman. It's a job and a woman can do it. Women are doing it. Anyway, I don't need to even go into this debate. I rest my case. It's time that men stop looking down on women. Stop quoting Bible, stop quoting Quran. We are not talking about religious roles. We are talking about a job. It's just a job. To be a president is a job. To be a governor is a job. Anyway, I rest my case. I care, you know? So thanks for all the people that wrote me. I appreciate you. That's all the time that I have for emails today. Please keep sending your emails to adiola.kipnero at gmail.com. All right, y'all, don't forget to get your ticket for the show coming up in Boston, April 16th. Myself, Dr. Damages, we have a number of musicians. We have all kinds of acts planned out for you guys. And of course, Tomato Joss, the one and only Tomato Joss will also be there. You don't want to miss it if you're living in Boston or the Boston area. Make sure you get your ticket. Uh, this is the website where you can get it online. And if you want to call somebody to get it, these are the phone numbers to call. And April 16th is almost here. So get your tickets on time. I'm looking forward <laughs> to meeting you guys in Boston. All right, y'all, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out. <laughs>